I don't know about you, but when a new game releases, I'm more excited to look at the new map than anything else. The borders, the factions, the style, all of it. But that being said, I am a massive map lover anyway. However, Total War has never taken the leap to a map of the entire world. Unlike their competitors, Civilization and Paradox, for example. But then again, Total War is something different. It's not all in gameplay and mechanics, it's in the graphics too. Total War maps are visually stunning, whereas Civ and Paradox, it's a little bit more two-dimensional, and although can look beautiful, for the most part, it's nowhere near the scale of Total War. In addition to this, Total War maps are much more complex, more, more going on. Just look at the end turn time. Paradox, it's instant, the game is able to play with you, whereas that would simply not be possible technologically with Total War. And it needs that end turn timer to be able to process everything and get through the AI's moves. But with technology taking the strides that it is, is a world map now possible? And if so, how detailed could it be? Well, the simple answer is yes. 100%. A world map is possible with end turns that last the same as vanilla. The world map mod for Medieval 2 proved this. However, to get more complex, is one possible in the depth of the current titles? I think the best place to start would be with a settlement count. And we're going to get a little bit mathematical here, so grab your cool hat on and let's get into some numbers. How many settlements currently can be fit into the game and have it have decent end turns? Well, Warhammer 2 Mortal Empires has 295 in total. Rome 2 was at 183 and Three Kingdoms at 180. I would say Warhammer 2's end turns are the absolute bearable maximum for most people with gaming PCs at the time of its launch. So with new technology, as the game is a few years old, I think it would be safe to say that 350 settlements on the current engine with the current system is the maximum they can get away with before too many people cannot run it on their gaming PCs. If we were then to divide that evenly between the six continents, not including Antarctica of course, then that is almost 60 each. However, not all continents would be perfectly balanced. I would say Europe, India, Middle East, China and Japan should be full of in-depth, high-built settlements, as they have higher levels of development at the time. Whereas most of Africa and North America should have fewer settlements, but larger areas for them as we see in all of the Total War titles. Now, of course, there was a lot of development in some of these areas, around modern-day Mexico and around Mali as two examples, but development there can still be portrayed more frequently in specific areas. For example, the majority of Africa's settlements will be along the coast, like they don't all have to be evenly sized. So I looked into the population of continents at roughly that time to try and get a percentage. Roughly 1 billion people, 65% were Asian, 2% Middle Eastern, 15% European, 8% African and 3% from the Americas. 
and the rest is split from there. Now, games often favour the nations that will drive the most sales. I did my university dissertation partly on this, funnily enough. So I calculate it as 25% European, 60% Asian and Middle Eastern, 10% African and 5% uh, for the Americas. And Oceania, just add a few extra settlements. I, I, I don't see much being there or it being that active anyway. So now let's dive deeper into Europe. Europe holding 25% of the 350 settlements puts them at almost 90. We need to break it down further. At the time, 15% of Europe was French, which would give them 13 settlements. Spain was 6%, so 5 to 6, and Britain 10%. So, nine settlements, roughly. And that turns out to be perfect. Attila Total War had nine settlements for Britain also, about 12 for France and 15 for Spain. But the numbers can be budged around a bit. Does Britain in a colonial game really need nine settlements? Nah. So, they can be moved around. This is uh, just to give a rough estimate. So yeah, Britain does not need 9, but I don't think 3 or 4 that it had in Empire is enough. And so, I can say that the answer is still yes. The Creative Assembly can create a Total War map that is to scale and depth of the last historical titles, Rome 2 and Attila, as that is all we really have to go off, and have it as a full world, which can be completely circumnavigated. Americas, Africa, all of Asia. Mathematically proven. And for reference, here is a map of Africa I made quickly. 10% of settlements. That is 35, and here we go. Of course, a rushed image, but it's just to show that it is possible to cover the continent in settlements given the limitations. Image inspired by EU4. And then I see many factions, especially in North America, using more of a nomadic feature rather than actually settling. That's why they can get away with having less settlements. Yeah, it'll be more like just completely empty settlements that have to be colonised. Wow. Just uh, done a quick calculation. Asia would have about 175 settlements. Maybe the full 350 total won't be needed. Maybe they could cut out 50 settlements just to speed it up that little bit more or do whatever they want, I don't know. However, there's an issue. Border size. This is a Warhammer 2 map. This is based on the world. So basically, it shows Europe, the Americas, and Africa. I added about 20% of territory to make up for the technology improvements. That really only is the Middle East. So yes, CA can fit enough settlements in, and then factions, to have a full world map, in detail, with plenty of cities. Not like Empire, where most of France and England was just one settlement, and have it run reasonably smoothly. But it would risk being crammed in. I really do not know how much map size is going to affect the game. What is the biggest stopper here? The city count or the map size itself? What takes up the PC space? I'm not an expert in video games or PCs. I like my mathematics, as I used it here to approve it, but that's all I can really do. So the answer is yes, but in parts it may feel a little too crammed in. Possibly. But, do we care? I did a survey. 
asking what people wanted for a Rome 3 and Medieval 3. A massive majority said, and I agree with them, that they would just want a bigger map. Not full world. It's not needed. And for that, I believe a Crusader Kings 3 sized map would be perfect. And that a map of Europe, North Africa, the Middle East, India, China, Mongolia and Japan is possible to do with the same settlement count used in historical titles before. And possibly more at this point. And it will not be crammed in at all. Also, as a quick point, some of you said you want more settlements and I agree that could be good, but I don't think it really needs it. Britain being split into 9 settlements with Warhammer tier graphics for a medieval 3 would be perfect. But when you get to the point where England is broken down into like, you know, 20 settlements by itself, I'm telling you now, I am not doing a large faction campaign. Turn 1 would take forever to manage everything. But then again, in regions such as Germany and Italy, that would work really nicely to show all the different states like that. However, a lot did also say in comments that you want a full map for Empire 2, and as proven in this video, it would work. In fact, the really tight feeling the map could have could work really well to set the mood in Europe. You are trapped in, in a tight space, trying to break free and into the open new world. It could work really nicely there. Anyway, I have been Melkor, and I hope you enjoyed. Thank you to Patreons, Kebby, Pyrrhus, General Rombo, and Boomerstein. Subscribe for more, share with anyone you think may be interested, and if you want to see me break down something like this again, just give the video a like. I have been Melkor, and for now, until the next one, tomorrow's video, goodbye.